I remember a case of a young man, actually a man over 40 years old, looked for me with his life ruined. He lived for about 20 years on drugs, he lost everything, job, family, relationships, his communion with God, he left the church, he was trying to come back. When he was telling me his story, I noticed something usual that happens today in the world. He put a lot of blame on other people. He started saying, Bishop, I backslid because I worked with people who gave me bad examples. They were people who taught me to drink, to take drugs, to do what was wrong, to get involved with women, and I fell for this world. And I face planted in this world. Today I'm an addict, I have no job, have nothing, I feel like dying. I go to the doctors, they give me medication and I end up going back to drugs. I love a woman and she doesn't want me anymore. Why would that be? Why does the woman does not want him anymore? I think she betrayed me, she blocked me, she doesn't want to hear about me anymore. I want God to help me to get this woman back. So, with all this past and history, he still wanted the wrong thing. He was still pursuing the wrong thing. He wanted the woman back, that the woman accepted him back. But did he had condition to take care of a woman, to offer something to that woman? No. Was he able to be in a relationship, being an addict, lost, not in his right mind, lost in this life? No, he didn't, but he wanted the relationship back. So with all my strength, I tried to show him, your problem is not the woman who left you and does not want you anymore. Your problem was not the people who induced you to evil. You are the problem. As long as you don't see this, you won't change. You need to take upon yourself the responsibility for your life. Because, unfortunately, people, and I'm not saying that we don't suffer in the hands of bad people in this world. I'm not saying that we don't suffer injustices. All these happen, not only with him, but with everyone. And I told him, listen, I've also worked with people who gave me bad examples, but here I am. I'm not better than you. But maybe the difference between me and you is that you looked at them and I chose to take my eyes off them and to look at Jesus, to look at the one who is perfect and not at who is imperfect. Now I'm talking to you who are listening to me. Maybe your problem is that you've been looking at who is imperfect and I learned something in life. I never allow myself to forget this. Where I look is where I go. God put our eyes in front of our heads, not on the side, not in the back of our heads, but on our faces for us to look forward. And where I look is where I go. To whom I look at is whom I'm going to become. So if I look at someone evil, I will become one of them. So who should I look at? to the one who is perfect. I know that I will never be perfect, but I want to be as close as possible to this perfection. So who should I look at? To Jesus, the perfect man. When you look at Jesus, what happens? You are no longer worried with anyone else. 
people don't scandalize you. Oh, I didn't expect this from so and so. They did this or that. What a terrible thing. No. When you look at Jesus, you only expect from him and no one else. So people don't scandalize you anymore. You don't compare yourself to anyone else, which is another great burden that you take off from your shoulders. When you look at Jesus, he shows you with wisdom at the right time, things about you that you need to improve. And then you will improve not because you are competing with someone, not because you want to show off to someone, but because you want to please him. You need to look at him. So when you take upon yourself the responsibility for your life, you understand that changes that you are looking for, they need to come from you first. The problem is not the woman who left you, who might have betrayed you, who does not want you anymore, and you are unhappy because the woman you love does not want you anymore. The problem is not the woman, but you, who put this woman in a podium. You put the woman in a podium or a man, that's it. This person became like a god, like this young man who looked for me with his life in ruins, and what did he want? When he returned to church, he wanted the woman back. He didn't come to look for God. He wanted the woman back, so he wanted God to serve him. Listen, I'm here for you, Lord, who are almighty, to change the mind of the woman who I'm in love with, for her to return to me. I felt like saying, I didn't say, but I felt like saying, listen, you're in the wrong place. You need to go to those places where they advertise, I bring your loved one in five days. As you are in ruins, so go all in. It's what we feel like saying to the person. But obviously I didn't say it, because the person doesn't wake up. But I told him, your problem is that this woman is in the place of God. Look how you are crying, crying for a woman who doesn't want you anymore. But why was he in that state? Because his inner state was deplorable, deplorable. Because for his whole life, he placed his happiness on the dependence of third parties. He placed his life on the dependence of people who cannot answer their expectations. Friends, women and everything else. I remember the paralytic man in the story that speaks about Jesus visiting that pool, that people were by the pool expecting an angel who will steer up the waters and the first to enter the waters will be healed. And Jesus came to a man and said, do you want to be healed? He asked the paralytic man. And instead of answering the question, which there was only one answer to this question of Jesus, I want. Maybe if he was mental, but it was not possible for this to be the answer. He was by the pool because he wanted to be healed. It seemed to be a silly question from Jesus. Do you want to be healed? But he raised the question to take from him the right answer, the answer of faith. But instead of answering Jesus' question, what did he do? He didn't answer the question and said, Lord, my problem is, I'm a paralytic man, and when the waters are stirred up, I start to drag myself to go to the waters, but those who have better legs than me go first, and I am never healed. Then he put the blame on his legs, he put the blame on his faulty legs, he was a paralytic, and on the other sick people. Nobody gives me a chance, nobody's nice with me to say, okay, this time we will help you, this time is you. Nobody does that with me, so I'm here. 
So he was blaming something or someone for his situation. And when the person is in this scenario, they are deaf. They don't listen to God. The paralytic didn't listen to the question. The question was, do you want to be made well? This was the question. So simple. The easiest question in his life. And he didn't give the answer that he should have given. And maybe you are like this. God speaks very clearly something simple for you to do and accomplish. But you don't listen. Do you know why? Because your mind is elsewhere. Your thoughts are elsewhere. You are always trying to find someone to be blamed, to point your finger at. I'm unhappy because of this person, because of this here. I'm a victim of people and situations. Stop, dear friends. Stop doing this. Wake up. Take upon yourself the responsibility for your own life. Stop looking at others and look at God. And take the responsibility to do for yourself what no one else would do. No one else would do what you must do. And take everything and everyone from your heart who might be in God's place. Because these things and people who are above God for you, that you only go to God to try to solve these things, these things are the reasons for you to be destroying yourself, to be in ruins, crying, and becoming like a worm, instead of being a strong person, a decisive person who fights and will win no matter what. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.